So this is our external portal. It's one of the four components of the system. Uh, as you know, uh, this is an online in the cloud system. Everything is actually hosted in the Microsoft servers online, and we access the system using browsers normal web browsers, any web browser really, although Edge, the new Edge and Chrome are uh, recommended. Uh, the users, the external users, so industry, uh, to make an application would log into this that you've just seen. So I'm logged in now as, a, uh, in, as an industry user into the system. And to create a submission, I would use this. Go to my draft submission. And it will show me all the current submissions that are in draft state. So these, th those that I haven't sent yet to the European Medicines Agency, or to ourselves, in fact. Uh, and if I want to create a new submission, I just click here. And the system asks me first, OK, are you applying as an individual or on behalf of an organization? Because we can have uh, some uh, regulatory entitlements given to individuals, not just to organizations. And if uh, I'm applying on behalf of an organization, of course, I need to be affiliated to that organization. And in fact, if I click here, it will show me uh, only those organizations to which I am affiliated to. This is not managed in the Dynamics 365 in IRIS, uh, the CRM. This is managed outside. Well, it is also managed in IRIS, but the main portal for the applicant to get authorization and affiliation is another system that does this for us, it's called the uh, account management system of the agent. So I'm currently affiliated to these three organizations. Uh, they're fake, of course, I'm, I'm applying in, in UAT. Once I've selected the organization, I need to tell the system which address uh, uh, of the organization I'm applying on behalf of, because the outcome of the procedure has to be delivered to a specific address. And now I can select the type of application. Let's say I want a designation, um, an orphan designation. I select the type of application and I progress. I've chosen one of the application types. We have 10 or 15, but this is just one. So they have another. Okay, here I can add additional participants in the submission, like other managers, other contributors, but for the time being, I'm not adding anyone. Uh, this is in case you want other people to work as well on your submission. This is the slowest part of the whole thing because the system is creating a lot of records in the background. Okay, now the first thing that I need to do here, you see everything is grayed out except for this first tab, which is select RPI. RPI is the research product identifier. It's the internal code of the agency for the products. And the system here will show me only those products for which which are assigned, let's say, to my organization or one of the organizations I am affiliated to. Okay? Without specifying the product that must be already in the system, they cannot progress. And we use this code to link the same development entity, the same product, uh, across all the procedures. Uh, if, we, if we save this, then all the other uh, tabs in the submission will become available. And you will see them uh, in blue, and now they are clickable. Here they are, okay? So we can check if the product information, if the, if the RPI we've given is correct here. Just a just, just checking. Uh, and we can provide additional information on the product to update the information that the agency already has on this product. For example, we can add an enabling technology. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we asked applicants to tell us if they're using any advanced uh, enabling technology in the development that might be of interest. And you can see that they, they can add, I don't know, technologies, human cells. It's, I, I don't know, it's fake. I'm just adding them to show you how the system works. But they can add one or more than one. Then they have to confirm, save and return. Then we start with the general information. I'm actually creating you uh, an actual submission online. So here there's a number of fields and you can see some are mandatory. There's an asterisk in here. Uh, some others are not uh, marked as mandatory, but they're still mandatory because there are validation rules in, uh, in the system. 
This is not mandatory because there may be no marketing authorization in the EU. Uh, this is also not mandatory. This is mandatory. If you don't specify, if you say no, it will be grayed out, of course. If you say yes, uh, then you must add a number. Now, if we try to save this tab, it won't accept it because uh, there's a number of required fields that are not completed here. So this is what we call automatic validation of the application. And it's a, a feature to save time uh, of the administrative staff at the agency who then do not need to check all these things because all the fields are filled in by definition. Otherwise, the applicant is uh, not even able to uh, apply to, to save. So let's answer no quickly. Are you an SME? No. Contact person is uh, Paolo Tomasi. Uh, email address is, let's put a uh, fake email address. Phone number, these are all mandatory. And contact number for public inquiries. Okay, let's try and see if it works. Yes. So we filled all the fields with the necessary data, the data in the correct format, so we can go to the next uh, um, screen. Uh, the legal basis uh, has to be specified, uh, the type of condition, uh, there are other methods, no other methods. Uh, um, so no, uh, current estimated prevalence is also mandatory. We need to put a date. This is not mandatory. Not mandatory, but we can still provide information. Here we need to put, I don't know, what do we put? Uh, add this to these. Any condition, but we also have to add it as a code from Medra. Because this is needed. Uh, okay. Then we need to specify the age ranges that this affects. Uh, um, development stage at the time of application now and save and return the system does its user validation in the background and we're green now and we can finally upload the documents so here uh, we can add files from the desktop. Let me choose um, any file, really. I know this one, just for an example. And these uploads the file in here. They can download it, of course, and remove it during the draft if they need to add another file. But once they submit the application, this file cannot be deleted anymore. They can add a new version of the file separately but they cannot overwrite this file or deleted it, okay? Uh, then we have to specify if we've added all the documents, uh, and this is mandatory field, and save and return. And at this point, our application is basically done. So we have another uh, uh, tab here, documents from EMA. Uh, what is this for? So this is currently is empty, of course, because we haven't submitted the application to the agency yet. So you see it's empty. But this is where the applicant will find any documents that we want to make available to them. We don't send the documents to them via email. We don't use Udralink, which is an internal system for safe sending of uh, 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 files to, uh, uh, in Iris. We just uh, put the file in a folder that we see in SharePoint. And once it's in that folder in SharePoint, the applicant can see it here in their submission and they can download it. That is a lot safer than sending documents, as you can imagine, via regular email. But for the time being, this is empty because uh, this procedure hasn't started yet. And what the applicant so far has done is they've edited uh, two records, well, three actually, the submission record and the scientific content record. But no case record has been created so far. So we don't have a procedure yet because the applicant still has to submit. Now, submitting is pretty easy. There is a confirmation here to be done. Uh, that, yes, I'm authorized, etc. Then I have to specify whether I have a small and medium enterprise status at submission. Click Submit. It's red. <laughs> There's a further uh, warning. Are you sure you have provided everything? If you're not, go back, review the application. If you click Submit, uh, uh, the, the application will be uh, sent to us. Well, sent to us. We can also see it 
before, of course, as a draft. But when uh, an applicant clicks submit, a case record is created and everything starts. And that's the official date and time when we receive the submission from the applicant. And uh, once the applicant does that, you can see that now the list is not any more draft submission, but it's ongoing submissions uh, because uh, this submission is not in draft state anymore. It is now in progress. Uh, and they uh, they can wait for um, for us to open the case and assign it a status. They can always edit the submission, add contributors to it, and do a number of other things, uh, including, for example, change the, the submission contact, so the person who receives all the emails from the system about this submission. So once they've done that, the submission uh, uh, appears in our... Um, case management system, 